FDA, where over $1.5 billion have already been spent while you were sleeping. One of the stars of the playoffs, box guard Trey Young, agreed to a five-year rookie max extension worth up to $207 million. Chris Paul, meanwhile, will stay with Phoenix. He has a new four-year deal. Could be worth as much as $120 million. He's 36 years old. Of course, he led his team to the finals this year. And maybe the biggest free agent move so far coming in Miami. Kyle Lowry joining the Heat in a sign-and-trade deal. Miami also adding former Bucks forward P.J. Tucker. And so the Heat trying to get themselves into a position where they can compete. And so let's go live to Tokyo, where the busiest man in the world is our NBA insider, Brian Winhorst. I say the world literally as he is a world away. Let's talk about the Heat now. We sometimes look, I feel like we've started looking at the East as though it's the Nets and the Bucks, and that's it. Would you now put Miami in there as a legit contender with Kyle Lowry? Yeah, they're right on the edge. I mean, Pat Riley has won so many free agent sweepstakes in his executive career, and here is another one. It's a huge addition for them. Not only that, it's going to really engage Jimmy Butler. I do think these two guys are going to work well together. But the Heat are not done. They have to fill up to seven roster spots with minimum salaries. And they are going to be in a dogfight with the Lakers, who may have to sign up to nine minimum salary players. So which role players are able to come and get that, those uh, cheap deals is going to be important. And then they need their young players to elevate. Tyler Hero had a sophomore slump season. Yeah, Lowry and Butler are great. They brought Duncan Robinson back. They need Tyler Hero to play more like he did two years ago. Then you may have the package of a championship. Well, you mentioned the Lakers. Let's talk about the moves that they made yesterday. You say they're going to have to fill out the roster with minimum salary players, but they brought back several familiar faces. How do they look right now, given how tied up they are financially? They look old. <laughs> they are arguably going to be one of the oldest championship pretenders we've ever seen. Um, they do say in the NBA, you win with men and not boys, but they may want to try to get a couple of boys because uh, there they've got to try to bring him back. Um, this is what LeBron wants. LeBron wants to play with guys he's familiar with and guys he trusts. That's what the Lakers are delivering him. They don't need any more home runs. They've got stars in place. But they need some singles. They may have started hitting a couple yesterday, but they need some more. All right, we'll see what they can do. In the meantime, while you were sleeping, not you, Wendy, but everybody watching was sleeping, Team USA beating Spain in the Olympics there. And so after something of a slow start for this team, both in the exhibition to France, does this team now appear to you destined to win the gold medal? They're getting close. They're still not putting whole games together. They were down 10 points in the first quarter or the first half in this one. But Kevin Durant has just been fantastic. He is, look, Greeny, he's the best American Olympian basketball player we've had. I, he's going to surpass Carmelo, I think. And he is adding to that case. He had 29 points in this one. And even if they're not great, Durant makes them great when he keeps playing like this. If he's got two more in the chamber like this, they're going to take gold. We'll see what happens. Again, Wendy is a man who has not slept in an awful long time. Thank you very much for staying up and getting up here with all the latest on the NBA, Wendy. Meanwhile, to the N. I mean, you have $130 million. There's five guys on your roster. That's it. So you're yep. left with the veteran minimum exception. You're left with your $5.9 million um, tax minimum. What really hurt them was Alex Crusoe going to the Bulls. Yeah. Because you had bird rights on him. You could have ex exceeded the cap. Uh, you still have tail on Horton Tucker as a restricted free agent. Um, this is kind of the name to keep an eye on. Not as far as returning back to the Lakers. Okay. You still have bird rights. You can maybe go out and do a sign and trade, and maybe you can flip uh, Schroeder to a team um, and bring back multiple players here. Um, the market is chilly right now. Yeah. I mean, there is limited spending out there, and uh, maybe you can take a team and, and flip him to a team that needs point guard. But Trevor Reza, Dwight Howard, Wayne Ellington, you know, guys who had played there before are all back, but... That's what happens when you have $130 million committed to, to five players. Yeah, Laker fans wonder if they can maybe use that asset to go get a shooter yeah. to put on that squad as well. And lastly, let's go up to Chicago because yeah. they added a pair to the backcourt there. Um, it's been a while since Chicago's been in the mix or doing something. They're trying to build a little something here in the, in the interim. I loved what Chicago was able to do. You know, a, um, point guard was a priority for them, especially with uh, Kobe White out for yeah. an extended period of time. And they had limited limited flexibility, so they acted as a team 
over the salary cap. So what they were able to do is they were able to flip uh, Tomas Sadoransky and then use Garrett Temple in a sign and trade. And then they go out and get Lonzo Ball. You know, that's a, that is a good move for them as far as an upgrade there. Right. Um, Alex Caruso on the mid-level uh, mid exception. The big question is going to be, and, and Brian Windhorst talked about it this morning, Zach Levine. Mm -hmm. Ex, uh, rene renegotiation eligible. They don't have cap space right now to go out and do it. So, But the roster is improved. Yeah. And that's the big goal. So he can still sign a big contract next offseason, but he's going to have to wait. But I think the goal is improve the roster around him, let him wait one year, and that money will be sitting there. Yeah, and that's the thing for him. If they make a, a run to the playoffs like the Knicks yeah. did out of nowhere, maybe that is satisfying him for this season and get paid in the summer of 2022. Bobby Mark stays paid. Look at that suit. <laughs> Uh, should be called NBA Expensive Agency. There is nothing free about these guys. are all signing big tickets. And the first day of free agency full of action. The big players were on South Beach. Miami Heat working towards completing a sign and trade. Bringing Kyle Lowry from the Raptors. 2019 champion. Expect to snag a three-year deal. Uh, then the Heat turned towards one of their own. Working on a max extension with Jimmy Butler. Have to have him in the fold. The 31-year-old led the Heat to the 2020 NBA Finals. Posted career highs last season in field goal percentage, assists, and led the NBA in steals. And also the Heat took care of sharpshooter Duncan Robinson, agreeing to a five-year, $90 million deal. Get this, that's the largest ticket by any undrafted player in league history. Robinson joined Steph Curry. Uh, Robinson joining Steph Curry and Klay Thompson as the only players with multiple seasons of 250 made threes while shooting over 40%. And then the late word, Tim Bontemps is confirming P.J. Tucker signs a two-year, like $15 million deal. So you look at the how the Heat project for next season. Let's just say they project really well. Wow. A star-studded lineup they can throw out on the court now. NBA front office insider Bobby Marks joining us now. And Pat Riley had himself Woo, a day, huh? Man. Pat Riley, the, you got to bring out the big calculator for this. Wow. <laughs> and, and we have something along those lines here. But, yeah. but what a day for Riley and the Heat. I mean, you know, not, I mean, maybe completely transforming their roster now. Obviously, they took care of some of their own. Uh, but you tell me, where do you want to start here? And, and how much better are the Heat today than they were yesterday? Yeah, well, I'll start with it. They're a top three team in the Eastern Conference. I'm putting them up there with Brooklyn. I'm putting them up with Milwaukee, um, ahead of Philadelphia. I think these moves solidify that, especially with Kyle Lowry. I think the, gymna the gymnastics as far as how they were able to do everything, it started yesterday with Goran Dragic exercising his uh, $19.4 million um, option. That allowed them to stay over the salary cap. They didn't go under the cap. They could have signed Lowry outright if they wanted to. They didn't do that. And when you take a player out like, you know, Dragic and probably Precious Achua, and then you add Kyle, you know, into that mix, his number is going to be a little bit of, uh, higher than that 25, right around 27. That keeps you in the game here. The, what they were able to do, though, is Duncan Robinson. He had his bird right, so now you can exceed the salary cap to bring him back right around $16 million, and you keep on adding, and they'll be able to stay under the luxury tax, under the hard cap. When you look at here, they're under. And then, you know, and then you, look at, a, yeah. then you look at a player like, you know, we'll see where P.J. T Tucker is down here. I think we might even have him in the fours. Yeah, we got him in the fours. Um, and then you had P.J. Tucker because what happened is, is that you still had your here's PJ. You still had your mid-level exception. So you had your 9.5 million dollar mid-level exception. PJ gets about seven million dollars of that, and then when you slide him in there, you're still under the luxury tax. <laughs> How's and you that can, possible? And you can fill out the yeah. rest of your roster with minimum guys. You're probably going to lose Kendrick Nunn, um, who's a restricted free agent. But yeah, you basically have turned over your roster. You know, two years after they made the Jimmy Butler deal.